What's up Hoopers, it's Coach Alex from Think Pro Basketball and in today's video we are going to go over how to defend a fast player. Let's get started. Alright guys, well like I said, we are going to go over a few ways that can help you defend a faster player. Now when I say a faster player, it doesn't necessarily mean shorter, right? A faster player can be tall as well, but we want to be able to focus on the things that's going to allow us to defend them efficiently. Alright, so the first thing, when you're playing against a fast player, one that's faster than you, you don't want to be uptight on them, right? So if Buddy has the ball, I'm just going to put the ball here for now, and we're going to say it's in Buddy's hands. But I don't want to be guarding Buddy where I'm this close to him, right? Because this gives him the advantage. He can use his speed to get around me, to get by me, and to get to the basket or to make a play for somebody else. But if I give him the appropriate distance, which may be arm's length, which could be a little further depending upon what your speed is, that's going to give us an advantage. It's also going to allow us to beat him to different spots on the court, right? Because if I'm up this close, like I said, he can use a jab step and then just get by me. But if I'm giving arms distance, or maybe even a little more, now I've given myself enough room where I can still contest his shot, right? And now if he does dribble, I can get one direction or the other with just one simple slide, right? If I need to retreat, it's backwards instead of having to turn and run. Because if I'm up here in this position and he beats me, now I have to get out of my stance, turn my back, and run to try to cut him off. But with distance and space, all I have to do is simply drop my foot to cover that space rather than turn my back and try to run with that player. All right, so the first thing, we have to be able to give the appropriate distance, the appropriate space from the offensive player, okay? So if I'm thinking that I can, you know, guard buddy arm's length, then I want to be about this distance where I'm in reach to contest, but I've given enough space to recover if he does try to beat me off the dribble. If I, if I need a little more space, I don't want to go too far off where I'm here, now I can't contest a jump shot. I would probably want to be here so once I see him rise up to shoot, I can contest late. But now I've given myself the enough space, if he dribbles left, I have to just simply slide this way. If he dribbles to his right, I slide this way, I've given myself enough space and room to recover off of anything that he does as an offensive player. Alright guys, so we just talked about giving the appropriate space, the right amount of distance for ourselves. It's not about the player that we're guarding, but it's about us, right? Making sure that the adjustments that we make are best suited for what we can do defensively against a faster player. Now the next thing I want to talk about is forcing them one direction. Because if you give this offensive player too much to think about, right, too much opportunity, too many choices, then you're putting it in their hands to beat us, right? So if I can force Buddy only to his right hand, that means that when I'm given the appropriate space, I want to sh shade him and keep him this direction. I don't want him to allow, I don't want to allow him to get back to his left hand. If I can force him and keep him on this side of the court, that's going to benefit me. It's going to make my job easier. I've given my space. Now all I have to do is keep him over here and rather than being straight up and allowing him to go whichever direction he wants. But if I force him and keep him over here, that's where all of his options are going to have to be. But it's my job that once he starts moving this way, that I keep him here. That I don't open my stance and allow him back the other direction. But as he dribbles this way, I keep my chest squared to him as a defender, but I don't allow him just a straight line drive to the basket. Meaning I don't want to just open up and allow him to go to the rim and score. I want to shade, but when I shade, I want to force him towards the sideline or towards the baseline, as those are extra help for me. All right, so if I'm up here again and I'm trying to shade, I'm giving too much, right? He's faster than me, he can take one dribble and create the edge. Again, give my space and shade. I wanna get on that top shoulder, have my foot out, but not allow him like this to just straight line. I wanna force him down towards the baseline or out towards the sideline to help myself and keep this offensive player over there. Again, would you rather give this player all the court to work with or just one third of the court that's going to help you and your teammates defending this fast player. Think about it. Keep them on one side of the court and force them one direction. All right, Hooper, so we talked about giving enough space, right? Forcing them one direction. Now, what if they haven't caught the ball yet, right? So now let's say that the ball is now at the top of the key. Boom, we put it here. What can we do in order to not allow this defender to beat us? How about we deny them the basketball? Make it hard for them to catch. 
So maybe if they do catch the basketball, they're way out there above the three-point line where now they're not even in scoring position, right? So if we make it hard for them, we're in denial, we can still see the ball, but we're seeing our defender especially because we want to focus on not allowing them to get an easy catch. If they're going to catch the ball, they got to catch it way out there, okay? Now, this is only up to really to your coach in allowing you to do that. Go, maybe you go to your coach, hey coach, this, coach uh, this player is faster than I am, can I try to prevent him from catching the ball? Can I make his catches harder? Can I push him out further so it's easier for me and the team to, you know, to guard this type of player, right? So if you pressure, right, now this is the time where you want to get close, okay? When you're denying a player the ball, you don't want to be this far off and try not to let them get the basketball. We want to be here where we can keep contact. So if Buddy started to move, all I have to do is be able to stick one hand out and I can feel where he's trying to move. And this allows me to stay in front and deny him the basketball, right? So do your work before the player actually gets it, okay? So if they're off the ball and they're trying to get open, deny them. Don't let them get it. Make their catch hard. Make them catch the ball away from the scoring area, which would be the three-point line. So now they do have to use their dribble to get in the scoring range. And you've already made your job much easier because you push them away or they haven't even got the ball. All right, so if you can do your work before they've actually caught the basketball, you put yourself in a much better position to be successful defensively against a fast player. All right, Hoopers, well, that's it for today's video on how to defend a fast player. Three tips that are going to help you do that efficiently and effectively. Now, until I see you again next time, before you go, make sure you give this video a like, leave a comment, let us know what you think. Subscribe to Think Pro Basketball, where we're providing you with professional level training that's going to deliver in-game results and help you take your game to the next level. Now, until I see you again next time, hit the gym, hit the court, put the work in, and remember to always keep hooping.